All right, we're looking at section 5.4 homework. Um, first of all, let's just dive into it. We're talking exponential growth in this section, so some of these problems might be a little bit challenging, but let's find out. I don't think this first one is. A total attendance at a natural history museum is modeled by the function f of x equals 12,673 times 1.048 raised to the x. If your initial attendance Initial total attendance, that is, the total attendance when x is 0, was measured on January 1st, 2013. What's the initial total attendance? So hopefully you already know what the answer is on this. Basically, it's saying um, what's the total initial attendance, which means plug 0 in for x up here. And anything raised to the 0 power is going to be a 1. So this 1.048 raised to the 0 power will be a 1. And 12,673 times 1 is 12,673. That's going to be your answer on this one. Yeah, it's that easy. They won't always be this easy, though. For example, maybe this one. The population is decreasing at 3% per year. If the population is 26,000 today, what will it be in 12 years? Round your answer to the nearest whole number if necessary. Give me a second. Let me get that set up, and I'll explain what's going on here. All right, we are set up. So I've got this set up here. Um, the the fu function we want to use for this, this is an exponential growth or decay formula. Um, it depends on whether you're growing or decaying. If you're decaying, this r would be a negative value. You'd call it negative. If it's increasing, you'll just make it positive. And that's what we have. We have it increasing. A is your initial population. R is your rate. Turn it into a, a decimal. And x is going to be your time in years. So what we want to do here is plug all our values in we're talking a value of x is 12 years so that's where my 12 is going to go for my x for a we're talking 26,000 and for r we're going to use 0 0.03 now one in the parentheses 1 plus 0 0.03 is 1.03 and then the next thing you want to do remember your order of operations you want to do your exponent first okay this is important exponent first 1.03 raise it to the 12th power and then after that, multiply by 2,600. And that will give you your answer. And I've got a colleague up at Salt Lake Community College who would go all sorts of berserk if I wrote equals, because at this point, it is not equals. It's approximately, because we're rounding, right? Rounding the nearest whole number. I mean, I got 37,069.7 something, which they said rounded the nearest whole number. It's going to round all the way up to a 70 in this case. So your answer here is going to be 37,070. Uh, if you got questions on this, please let me know. The big issue I think you might run into is right here. The common mistake is people try to multiply 26,000 times the point 1.03. And that's not right. Okay, order of operations, you got to take care of your exponent first. All right, give that a whirl and see how it goes. Now my third problem I'm dealing with, total number of sales of a spy novel is modeled by the function... Uh, f of x equals 13,435 times 1.038 raised to the x power. If the initial total number of sales, that is the total number of sales when x is 0, is measured on January 1st, 2012. First, 2012, what's the total number of sales going to be in January 1st, 2025? Rounded the nearest whole number. This is going to be a lot like a previous problem. Except what we're going to do is figure out what happens in for x. 25 minus 12, that's 13. So plug in a 13 for x, solve it, you've got it. Let's move on. Growing linearly, the balance owed on your credit card triples from 800 to 2400 in 12 months. If the balance is growing according to the exponential function, f of x equals 800 times 1 plus 0 0.096 to the x, where x represents a total number of months. Uh, see, this time they've got it in months, so they defined what x is. What would the balance be after 12 months? Round to the nearest cent. All right. I think this one, you're just going to plug in a 12 for your x and grind it out, just like we've been doing. <coughs> I'll let you guys worry about that one. This one's pretty much like the one we just read, except they actually give you what your value is for x to plug in. I am going to let you guys worry about that one on your own. I don't think it's that bad. This next, okay, this one. 
<clears throat> Let me get set up for this guy. Hang on just a second. All right, this one is pretty wild if you don't know what to look for. I mean, if you click on Tutor, it'll give you an example, and I'll do something similar. Um, but let's see if I can shed some light on what's happening here. So this is Q. Your old elderly neighbor places a bag of rice on your doorstep each morning. The first day, the bag contained one grain of rice. No, not very much. And on the second day, two grains of rice. The next day is four grains of rice, so you're like doubling each time. And then each grain of rice weighs 0 .4, 0 .04 grams. Um, so that's actually irrelevant information, this whole weight thing. Although there is a future problem where that will be relevant, and we'll see where that comes in later at a different problem. Because on this one, they just want to know how many grains of rice will be in the bag on the 26th day. Turns out it's going to be quite a few grains. But what's happening here? Well, we know that it's doubling each time, right? So I went ahead and created this in Excel to kind of give us an idea of what's happening. Um, <clears throat> so for example, on day one, you've got one kernel. On day two, you've got two. On day three, you've got four. And on day four, you've got five, or excuse me, eight. It's doubling each time, right? So the next day, you're going to have 16 and 32 and 64 and so on. It gets big in a big hurry. It's growing exponentially. So what's happening here? Well, it is a formula, and what that formula is, is it's taking 2, and it's raising it to whatever day you're on, and then you subtract 1 from it, right? You're looking for a pattern here. So if we wanted to look at it a little more closely, maybe on day number 4, it might be easy to see what's happening. Um, <clears throat> so on day 4, now 8 is the same thing as 2 raised to the third power, right? So you're saying, okay, 2 to the 3rd power would be something like, um, let's kind of do it out here, 2 raised to the 3rd power. You know what, I'll do it, I won't do it here, I'll do it down here. I don't have any room. Let's do it here. I want to make sure I'm somewhat consistent. So 2 raised to the 3rd power is 8, right? But, so that would give me um, this guy here, but the thing is, my exponent here, here, excuse me, is a 3, not a 4. But if we took 4 and subtracted 1, that would give me the 3, right? And so that's why we're getting this thing in the formula, that 4 minus 1. 4 minus 1 is 3, so that 2 cubed, I picked it up here, it's 2 cubed is 8. Alright, so that's kind of the the logic behind how this is working. And this 2, actually, that you see in the base of this exponential equation, it's basically what we're doing each time here, kind of, right? We're doubling each time. If we were tripling, then obviously that 2 would be a 3 instead of a 2. All right, so that's what's happening. So you're like, well, okay, great. What's happening on day 26? Well, you can use Excel if you want to. Or if you want, you can just go and put for day 26, put a 26 in the exponent. So you're looking at 2 raised to the 26 minus 1, which I actually did down here. That's the answer, as it turns out. But what's happening is you're taking 2 raised to the quantity of 26 minus 1. So that's 2 to the 25th. Punch that out on a calculator. There it is. Um, 33,554,432 grains are going to be in the bag on the 26th day. So, yeah, your elderly neighbor is a little bit weird. <laughs> it's that person, she, she, he, I'm not sure. Older person is a little bit off his or her rocker if they're going to be doing this. So anyway, that's the problem. Hopefully that helps. Let's move on. Um, the balance owed on your credit card triples from 700 to 2112 months. We did one like this already. Um, for this one, I believe we are going to plug in 40 yes plug in 45.4 in for x i was checking to see if we needed to subtract 12 from it you do not um, because how i know is that initially you're already at 700 and that's what's in the formula here now if i had 2100 here instead of the 700 then yeah i would have taken 45.4 minus a 12 and that would have been the x value but it turns out we don't have to worry about that so i would just plug in 45.4 in for your x and that'll take care of that one i'm moving on but if you have questions let me know this next one 
been there, done that, got another one. It shouldn't be that bad. And this next one is the same um, like that previous problem that we did. So I'm not going to mess with that one. Although, well, I can't go back. Um, on that previous problem, if it asks for how much did the whole sack of corn weigh, then you want to multiply it by however many grams it says for a single corn, kernel of corn. So just make sure you read the problem quietly, quite carefully. Um, and care quietly, that's up to you. All right, this problem we've done well on like this already. I think you're good to go on this section with the homework. But if you have questions, definitely let me know.